Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Modern Market. This is our daily show for Monday to Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern time, where we discuss all things to do with the modern market. That is the crypto market, the NFT market, and how to make some or a lot of money on the internet. I'm your host, b -Check. I'm joined by my legendary co-hosts, Legendary and Sammy, and I'm delighted to say we have got in the guest spot a very special guest today. We have Dem, the head of community at Azuki, a key contributor at Anime Coin. So cannot wait to get into one of the main headlines today with him, as well as all the other headlines as well, because he's going to be with us the whole show to get into all of the news with us. So we will do that in just a little bit. But as always, just a reminder, friends, that nothing that we say here is financial advice. We do not know anything for sure. So please do proceed with caution and exercise your own judgment. With that out of the way, Legendary, it is Thursday. It is the 28th of March. How are you doing? How are you feeling today? GM, GM, uh, doing very well. I am on day three of my juice cleanse and I'm still in a good mood. More Two more days to go. And uh, for our next show, I will be on solid food again. So we can then see if there is any difference in terms of my appearance or mood or contributions on the space. I used to think that your mood was always correlated with your bags and whether you were going up or not. Now I want to know how it correlates to which juice you're having. So like, if you're going to talk about the juice, I want to see it on the show. I know you had a variety of colors as well. What kind of flavors you got going on there? Um, I have, I think the total split is 60% is vegetable juice and 40% is fruit only. And my lunch juice... some portfolio allocation. For yeah, of juice. course. You gotta, you gotta diversify, right? You can't put all all fruits or a single fruit in your basket. You have to be diversified with that. And my, my lunch juice is called the breath pit is actually my favorite one. It's, um, apple, pineapple, mint, and that's it. The other ones are more vegetable heavy and not the most enjoyable ones, but I feel like I'm shilling some kind of product. So I'm happy that I'm not <laughs> holding it in the camera, I'm not transitioning from web three, uh, KOL to, to Instagram juice influencer. Look, once we build the distribution, we can sell anything. Like, just give us another year or so. Uh, let's see how it goes. Dem, welcome to the stage, my friend. What do you think about this uh, allocate, like doing portfolio allocations to juice? Have you, since you've been in the space, uh, gone in this direction as well? Good morning, everyone. It's great to be on the show. And yeah, that's got to be one of the most Web3 things I've heard <laughs> in a long time. Uh, diversifying the the juices that you have but it was just a matter of time i mean so as long as you can launch a solana shitcoin about it then, uh, mm. then it's valid yes uh that is the next stage of the business i think uh, we'll be going into but dem how are you doing otherwise how how is everything your side obviously a lot of cool stuff coming out with azuki soon or being announced with a lot lined up as well we're going to get into all of that and a lot more but how are you just feeling about the market at the moment uh, it's been an exciting week for the garden for for the azuki community i think it's uh the fruition of you know two years of planning and and exciting visions that we had very early on and mm -hmm. um it's really great to have found the right partners and uh the right time to tell that story and and to deliver that vision to the community in in a way that feels substantial and uh and it also just feels like march was such a tough time for eth nfts it was just rough for our community it was rough for every uh community everybody was saying ETH NFTs are dead, and um, it's great to feel some signs of, uh, of 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 life. And uh, you know, I think there's a lot of exciting things to to be said about the DeFi space, the Web3 space, the crypto space. But I'm a PFP -er through and through. I've been for the last three years. So mm -hmm. when you see NFT collections uh, or Solana collections, but that are PFP based, doing well, um, that just makes my heart sing. So. It's, it's been a bit of a sprint though. I mean, we started the week with knowing that uh, there were gonna be big announcements coming. And so, you know, whenever that happens, it's gonna, it's always gonna be a, a lot of uh, energy investment. So I'm feeling a little sleepy. Your show is so early guys for me, <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be here and uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, we appreciate you joining man. And we appreciate all the Azuki people in the audience, just so people know uh, where we're going with the show today. We're gonna do our usual like, discussion of some key topics from the timeline. We're going to get into all of the headlines. First, we're going to look at the SEC versus Coinbase. Then we're going to look at the Machi coin. And then we're going to get into Azuki by the end. But shout out to some new Azuki listeners. Can see Yuka, can see Gene, can see Ray Stoop in the audience, probably and Havoc too. I think we'll have a few more as well. Uh, shout out to you guys for joining us. 
Uh, we do this every day at 7 a.m. Eastern time, early doors, uh, first show out the gate every day. So we'll get into all of that and more in just a moment. Before we get into the headline, Sammy, and do that read, how are you feeling? Feeling as uh, properly allocated in terms of the, the rest of your life as well as Web3? I'm probably heavy, heavy work at the moment. I think the, the amount that's going on the market, that's probably the heavy, heavy weight of my portfolio for attention. So didn't you uh, do some late night degening yesterday? Yeah, I lost a fair amount on Cambria. <laughs> so, but hope, hopefully the blast gold makes up for it. So we'll see. But, you're yeah, going to get that. You're going to get that gold, though. That's the thing, right? That's the thing. Well, based on what Legendary has been telling me about shuffle and gambling, hopefully that the, the losses are made up by the, the gains from that. So we'll see. Yeah, you got to hope. you got to hope. Um, right, guys, let's, as always, let's get to the headlines, get you up to speed with some price action and the main headlines for today. As always, we're live on YouTube. We're also live streaming on X. So I'm sharing the screen for all the people who are watching in, but I'll read it out for the people who are not. Uh, starting with some price action, we've got crypto up a percent. Bitcoin reclaims 70K again. We're at 70.7K. ETH is up a percent at 3.5K. Solana up a percent at 187. Fairly steady. In terms of the headlines, number one, Azuki announces anime chain in collaboration with Arbitrum. Uh, some details from Azuki is this. With our anime productions, games, and physical products, we will showcase the power of a decentralized model for growing IP on anime chain. Um, very cool announcement there. Going to dive into that with them uh, towards the end of the show today. Next, 40 million raised so far by Machi with the Boba Opa presale. Uh, I don't know what we're doing with these um, presales. I was talking on the show with thread guy yesterday my second show of each day and got a lot of sentiment so happy to discuss that in just a little bit too and finally the court rules sec can proceed with case against coinbase the coinbase lawyer uh, paul grewal said today the court decided that our sec case will move forward on most of the claims but dismissed the claims against came coinbase wallet we were prepared for this and we look forward to uncovering more about the SEC's internal views and discussions on crypto regulation. So we'll do a little bit on that too, because I think Coinbase are fighting the good fight there. And I think it's relevant to all of us. Getting into some notable sales, we saw Coldy uh, selling this Warren Buffett piece, a one of one on Super F for 37 ETH. Uh, that's pretty significant. Number two, a big Azuki sale, uh, 24 ETH, and a also a Dimitri Cherniak ringer selling for 32 ETH. They'd fallen down to about 20 ETH recently. That's quite a unique one. So achieving a bit of a premium. In terms of some floor prices, we've got CryptoPunks at 46.5 ETH down a percent. Board Apes at 12.7 down 4%. Mutants at 2.4 down 4%. Dgods at 1.6. Captains down a percent at 3.6. Azuki's correcting after a bit of a big rise the last couple of days, down 6% at 4.9. Penguins at 12.9. Mad Lads at 146 sold, down 7%. Uh, they've been dipping a little bit just recently. And then Noun's winning bid was at 7 ETH. Uh, legendary that is the price action those are the headlines before we get into a discussion on the headlines in particular anything catching your attention uh always like to see a, a rare azuki selling significantly above floor i think in terms but we will get into the azuki story as you said a bit later on the show in mm -hmm. terms of the other collections what did stand out to me was um mochaverse being up 15 percent, almost 16 percent on the day and now sitting at a 4.8 ETH floor. Please do pump my bags, Legendary. That is very nice to hear. I wasn't aware of that. Um, Mokova has been one of those really vol... I mean, this is my observation of what happens with these NFTs that have, that have known tokens coming. Every now and again, they literally send a tweet reminding people that it has a token. I'm just going to show people the price action on Mokoverse as well. I'm going to share the screen at the same time. Uh, this is what happens at the moment. They send a tweet, which is reminding people that there's a token. Everyone remembers, and then the price pumps. And then over the next week or so, it just completely retraces uh, to a much lower price. So I'm, I'm trying to share maybe the, what's going on with this chart, the simple chart. Let's make it bigger as well. Uh, here we go. So Mockiverse just it like it goes up on announcement, then all the way down, and then up and down, up and down, and now we're up again. Uh, pretty insane to see. Sammy, I know you are uh, you are doing research for Mockiverse routine. You're quite involved there. Any reflections on the price action here? Yeah, I, I find it really bizarre. I mean, it just shows that the amount that people's attention literally flicks between various things. 
um, because this a lot of this stuff has been known. There was a teaser last week. Uh, I know that uh, this week there's some more news coming. So um, obviously I can't share what that is and people will find out in due course. But there, there is, uh, yeah, it's just, I think it's just people's shiny object syndrome, switching from one thing to another. Uh, there's a lot going on in the market. So people are de deploying capital elsewhere. But I think like ultimately Mocha, Mockaverse NFTs are, co-founders that's what they're kind of branded as with mockaverse so um it makes sense that if you want exposure to the mocker token like that, that that's been known that's been announced that the mocker nfts are probably going to be the the primary uh place to go so it's good to see um obviously it's my bags as well as well as your <laughs> check so um but yeah it's it's interesting um one question on this sammy i saw something on the token on on the on the what's it called on the on the timeline about is it realm points or realm world or there's oh, like a different yeah. website that they've set up and i wondered like what's got it sounded quite significant yeah so uh i think you might have cut out but check. i feel like i read it in public place and the website was that yeah so realm the realm, realm, realm the realm network is um i mean effectively mockaverse is they're trying to build the cultural layer of the internet so You've got uh, Animoca that has 450 portfolio companies. Um, so Mockaverse is effectively the flag flagship company that kind of the face of that. So I would liken the Mocker token to the BNB of Binance. So the Mocker token is that of uh, Mockaverse and also by default Animoca brands. So um, I think that you're effectively trying to build this massive rewards program for all the portfolio companies, bring it in. And that's effectively what the Realm Network is going to be. Um, so they've raised what 32 million in funding so they've got the funding i think binance only raised about 17 million back at their initial um raise so they've already raised double what binance did back in 2017 um and they've got some lofty visions so uh yeah i think it's undervalued but i'm obviously biased so yeah me too i mean when i first saw these at like one or two i think that's when i bought the few that i did I just had captains in mind and I appreciate that's like the wrong comparison, but like in the run up to their token, they obviously went up to 10 ETH and I don't know, obviously retraced and uh, they're probably following a different model, but I, that's what I had in mind. And I guess the market hasn't helped any of these collections recently, especially for ETH NFTs, because it's been so down and any pump is always sold into, but it's interesting stuff. I'm glad Legendary brought that to our attention. I'm glad we had Sammy to be able to speak to that. Would love to hear your perspective, Dem, in the sense of like these projects that have so much like good stuff planned, but then the price action just can never because because ETH NFTs have been so kind of suppressed or mm. attention has been flying around into meme coins, it just feels like the momentum never kind of manages to keep going. How have you seen it from your side? There was a post from a member of our community, uh, Abe Wood, and he said, I just was uh, surfing through Instagram and there was a 20 second video and on the comment section, somebody was like, is this worth the watch? Like, is this a good video? Like 20 seconds, you know, people can't sit down and watch a thing. Uh, so, so it's an attention economy. Uh, it's something that we're adapting and learning about. I think the Azuki model of announcements used to be like mysterious and then big boom surprise. And mm. we're really changing how we do that. Like now we do garden gatherings monthly so that we can talk about things that are upcoming to just remind people so there's an attention economy and also i mean there, there's just like really exciting opportunities out there like you know you can get into you can get into a solana coin or you can get into some some meme coin early and and you know make these 100x so um i think it's a battle for nft projects that have a team big team like us and want to do big things to fight you know this sort of uh more like guerrilla warfare of just grabbing a lot of attention for 48 hours and then and then exiting um but i mean that's you know that's why you get into something like like nfts web3 and crypto because every month you're in a different industry every month you're doing a different job even if you're exactly at the same company so there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing bad about it you just have to stay with the pulse and play around with things even our own community like uh you know i was trying to connect with a lot of our community on telegram and they were like i've never downloaded telegram and i was like wait how, how come you know it's like well everybody's downloaded telegram in the last three months you know you gotta you gotta renew yourself so um you got yeah yeah innovate or die that's that's the mo that's the motto yeah uh definitely true i love the perspective on the at the, at the attention 
economy. And kind of building on that, one of the key tweets I've picked out for today to discuss before we get into all of the headlines, we always uh, want to pick out like one key idea or something to discuss before we hit the headlines, is this tweet from Ansem. And just for the people who are either new here or just listening in, we stream live on X, both to my personal account, the Modern Market account, Legendary, Sammy's account, but we also on YouTube as well. So you can check us out via the Modern Market account if you want to watch in. Um, this tweet from Ansem kind of takes that to the next level where he's kind of trying to predict. I don't know if this is completely insane to be trying to do what he's just done, but predicting the leading altcoin narratives month by month <laughs> for the rest of the year, as if none of them can last longer than that. So I'm going to go through these just for discussion, try and get our perspectives here to see what we think. Maybe in the end, we don't agree with all of them, but we do like one of them as an idea. So let's see what we go. I'd love to hear your perspectives. Uh, this is what he said. For fun, predicting leading all court narratives for each month for the rest of the year. And he begins here. April, Solana and memes. So that's next month. May, social fi and NFTs. June, RWA and Deepin. July, gaming. August, alt VM rollups. September, artificial intelligence. October, redacted. November, L1s. December, ETH and DeFi. Uh, legendary, uh, like a lot there. I don't know what you even think of trying to do this type of exercise if it's meaningful in any way, but would love to get your just initial reaction. It's hilarious. I mean, I kind of miss restaking in there, like the restaking narrative. And I guess that can be miss. Ethan DeFi, but yeah, that's so late. I mean, that's way too it's late. So late, right? I think it makes sense if you try to look at it uh, from the perspective of the biggest, like TGEs. So if you know that a big TGE is coming in a specific month, you have, I don't know, Ionet and their token coming as a Solana deep in play, which is quite significant because they closed the last round of the $1 billion valuation and, and projects like that. And then you will know that they will take a lot of the attention. Um, but then that also like kind of causes a lag because if you have like one leading project that does something in a specific domain, others will follow and will try to rush their own tokens and create like that sort of mini meta um so i do think that there's like there is some merit to try to pin it down for the rest of the year obviously this is there is to do it month by month but generally i like the idea of it hmm. interesting so yeah you think restaking is a bit late uh solana does iron count as deep in yeah definitely definitely okay. i mean it's 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 gpu and call infrastructure built on solana yeah Interesting. Uh, Sammy, what are your thoughts here? Do you think this is a reasonable approach to try to think about this stuff month by month? And are there any of these that you think in particular are like winners? I do, th I do think that, um, I mean, for someone that's really dialed into the market, they probably have a gut feel and I don't think he's probably far wrong. It does make me want to literally create a Gantt chart with key events and try and test this thesis. But I think there's probably an overlap there. You've got artificial intelligence, which I think plugs into likes of gaming, um, sort of deep in. So you've got, I mean, deep in is effectively, you're creating, you're taking the, the bandwidth, got these decentralized nodes, whether it's a smartphone or whatever. Um, but the data that then is, is taken is then put into artificial intelligence. So I think there's a lot of overlap. So it depends in what in what way he's segmenting each of these uh, markets, but ballpark it kind of makes sense. Like you could probably put it down to some key events and then shift things around. But for someone that that's in the market altogether, I think you build up this muscle memory of what's going on, yeah. and you have a have a relatively good pulse on what's like when those things are going to hit. So um, I think all those things are pretty valid. Uh, you might switch one or two things around, but I mean the timeline within the next year could be pretty explosive. So. Yeah, I think that's probably right. But I would, I, the only way I'd be able to make sense of this is to know with like, I would layer on what Legendary just said. Like, if you know when the TGEs are happening, and we know from all the work that we're doing behind the scenes, we've done kind of lost count of the number of investments we've done behind the scenes as well. And like, when you can kind of map out when they're coming, you get a better sense of like wh when these things are going to hit. But then even when they hit, it kind of depends what they're up against to know whether which attention thing will win out, right? Like we can feel that there's a hell of a lot stacked up for gaming from, I would say, April to June, maybe. Like we can feel that, but, and, you know, hopefully that's that's bullish. But if there's too many of them going up against each other at the same time, or alternatively, if one of the other narratives hit in a way bigger way, 
there's a challenge there. However, the only thing I'd say to counter myself before we hit Dem and want to hear his thoughts on this is it feels like we're operating in different universes a little bit. Like all the NFT people and all of those people are like focused on meme coins, I think at the moment, but they've completely missed ETH restaking, for example, like that Etherfy drop that uh, us three got and something we got in quite a significant way. I've reached out to multiple people to see like, do you have any information on that? Do you know about that? And they're like, oh no, we haven't done that. So I, I do think actually there can be multiple, uh, mul multiple attention sinks going on at the same time because we we don't go in the same direction. Uh, Dem, would love to hear your thoughts on that. Do you think it's possible to have multiple things going on at the same time? What do you think out of this list is like one of your top picks for uh, the next few months? I think Anthem's brilliant. This is like such a funny tweet, but it's also an informative tweet. And it's it's killing me that you haven't hit like on it. Like I'm like, come on, give the guy a like. <laughs> uh, I think he doesn't go deep enough. Like I, I really wish it was month by month. Sorry, I was joking about like I, I really wish it was month by month. I feel like it's week by week sometimes. Mm. Um, as as a as a member of a team and as a person leading a community, I look at this as more of a challenge. And I'm like, how do we make April about anime? How do we make May about anime? Let's make Just June about anime. Let's make July about anime. You know, so we have to like. We have to go into these trends and uh, we have to punch through and, and set trends and set narratives. But uh, but yeah, I mean, so just a very realistic view of, of how this moves around and you need to be aware of these currents to navigate. So um, it's a brilliant tweet. And I'm, I'm uh, you guys probably know a ton more about all of these technologies and things because sometimes you do get a little bit of blinders on when, when you're very, very focused on your community. So it's always very healthy uh, for you to bring this to the different communities. and and. and like the NFT community looks at one thing, the Eve community looks at another thing. Uh, brilliant tweet, great way to start the day. You guys, you guys are you guys are on the ball. Like it, um, yeah. I, I I take many of those points. Legendary, I can see you writing in the private chat something which is hurting me deeply. Um, but Dem mentioned that we actually do know more deeply on some of these things. Obviously, this tweet is like a fun tweet. It's a little bit speculative. We don't really know for sure. We do know a hundred percent what happened with Etherfy. Uh, that drop came in, I think, on Monday last week, came out at a $4.5 billion valuation. I wrote about it in my newsletter post. You can read about it in my pinned tweet uh, and my latest newsletter post uh, if you want to know like how I how the airdrop kind of played out. But legendary, that Etherfy drop is now at $7.7. .7. It's almost doubled off the lows. Like, Do you want to speak to that a little bit to sketch out for people who are still unsure of that, like what exactly happened and why it's even pumped to... That must be like an what a seven and a half billion dollar FTV now. It's that a seven and a half billion dollar FTV. It's been at eight point five dollars. Um, it has seen a massive pump. We've also seen a pump of eigenlayer points in the same sense. They're now at point twenty six. Um, they were trading at sixteen cents for most of the time. It almost seems like that with all the opportunities you have around restaking, that just plainly sending money into eigenlayer and not doing a two-in-one a three-in-one strategy a restaking strategy manager how protocols like i'm eigenlayer kelp um renzo like to call themselves is like a missed opportunity yeah. and it's insane to see how much that etherfy rally is affecting all the other valuations and is driving is driving eigenlayer is driving mm -hmm. the volume on pendle where you can basically farm um different restaking points with up to a 50x leverage, which I'm doing currently. And honestly, I didn't expect that. Like, I obviously hurts me as well, right? I got a massive airdrop. I sold yeah. a good amount of it. I kept some of it, but I didn't. I, I, I thought that like $5 billion FTV yeah. versus like the 20 bill where people are speculating Eigenlayer to come out at was like reasonable, but I didn't expect it to go that high because ultimately it missed out on a mid five figure sum by selling too early. Yes, me too. Me too. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting and very important because as you say, what's happening here, this is the first of the restaking protocols that have come out. And it seems like that uh, positive response from the market is pushing not only the eigenlayer points up, which you, you receive at the same time as restaking via these protocols, but there's a bunch of other restaking protocols that operate in the same way, whose values I can only assume will go up in line with it. The only thing I would say, just to caveat, well, two things. One, smart contract risk. We've been through Munchables yesterday. That was clearly maybe a slightly different situation where it was like wildly unprofessional 
and that's why a lot of the funds got compromised but it can happen in in in, in even more professional contexts too so there's always that risk and the second thing and this is a more nuanced take specific with etherfi there is something to do with the power law here where they are by far and away the winner like yes there's renzo yes there's clay stack yes there's um swell you can re restake via all of these protocols and they're all slightly different in their own way but etherfi has won the battle at, at, at least to date and they're by far the highest so at least it's not like every single one of them is going to come out at 7.5 billion fdb is my point legendary you want to just put a, a, a conclusion on that yeah i very much agree with that it's also interesting to see like a very parallel development in both restaking and gaming where you also have a massive competition in gaming and some games are moving to the point where they are building an own l2 a building a validators node ecosystem out just to have more than a game and you now see that on the restaking side of things too where there are some of those um, restaking managers are also working on an own ecosystem on an own l2 solution just to basically catch up with the fact that they are not the first ones to come out with a token and to have that insane 7.5 billion dollar ftv yeah okay i think that makes a lot of sense interesting perspective there interesting just to bring that to our listeners and watchers attention as well we've been speaking about it we'll keep speaking about it because especially if it continues to be so valuable to people um right let's get into the headlines finally we said this is the order we're going to go we're going to go in the order of the coinbase news the matchy coin news and then we're going to hit uh azuki as we uh, close uh today so quick one with the coinbase news always very important to keep on top of the legal battles that are taking place we had Paul Growal, the lawyer from Coinbase, saying this. Today, the court decided that our SEC case will move forward on most of the claims, but dismissed the claims against Coinbase Wallet. We were prepared for this and look forward to uncovering more about the SEC's internal views and discussions on crypto regulation. Early motions like ours against a government agency are almost always denied, but clarity is the ultimate goal, and today's decision continues on that path. One thing I just want to clarify, I don't know if we need to go into more and more detail on this, but this was a motion to dismiss from Coinbase to the government. And when the headline came out yesterday, and including myself, because I didn't read it first, it seemed like everyone was like super upset or super annoyed or like got a little bit worried because like, oh no, Coinbase lost. All they lost was the ability to throw the motion out. Um, and what that means is that it's just going to proceed. It doesn't mean that necessarily the court actually agrees with all of the other the opposing arguments it just means that no the court the, the case needs to be heard because this was an argument to say the court, the case doesn't even need to be heard and this is the court saying no we want we want to hear the case we do want to hear it um and then we can make the arguments again so uh, i think that's the main thing to take away because i think people thought that coinbase like actually lost in some significant way it's like no they only lost in throwing the case out they then move forward with their normal points when it comes to it, when the case actually comes to get heard. Uh, Legendary, any reflections on this? I don't know if we want to spend a huge amount of time on the more technical side, but if you have any reflections, Sammy as well, uh, what are your thoughts? Just a very quick thought that in, in my eyes, it's a win that at the end of the case got dismissed, specifically the part around the Coinbase wallet, um, okay. that that is not, cannot be seen as a security. So that already is a win that we are like at a day where courts have a clear view to say, nope, this is not security. Yes, it's crypto related. We understand that we have that basic understanding of how a wallet works and what you do with that. And we don't need to look at this. So that we are already at that level is a win in my book. Fair enough. Uh, I think that is that is helpful. Sammy, did you have any reflections here? And then we'd love to throw to Dem just to kind of reflect on like, how the legal atmosphere affects teams because i don't think we've really ever had that perspective on the show so uh maybe we'll hit some of that too sammy yeah i think i think from the commercial standpoint if you look at some of the big asset managers they seem pretty unfazed by any of this that it's, it's they almost have that impression that the ETF is going to go through regardless like the the staking narrative it's not a big issue um and it's just a matter of time uh that they, they I think I saw a post from OSF that kind of sang to that that hymn sheet. So, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think the market's too concerned with with the outcome. Um, I think it is a positive. Uh, so, I think there was an initial negative sentiment around it, but when people realise what the actual uh, 
like when they actually read the document when they were when they read it yes when they read it um <laughs> they realized that actually it's a net positive so uh, i think fair, it's only a matter of time to be fair the headline that i can't remember who tweeted it maybe it was tier 10k tweeted it it was like all capital letters coinbase loses against sec <laughs> and everyone was just like no uh so that was the initial reaction which is kind of funny i guess uh classic reaction from crypto twitter Dem, we'd love to hear your thoughts from a kind of person who's been building this space for so long and how these broader crypto regulations affects you guys. Does it affect you at all? Does it not? Are you concerned, not concerned? Uh, how do you guys think about it? Yeah, great question. Cheer, Cheer Labs, which is the creator of Azuki, is a US-based company. I work okay. for Cheer Labs. And so what we see in what Coinbase is doing is like they're absolute heroes. They, okay. They've got the money, they got the war chest, they've got fantastic lawyers and they're going out there. And I would even say that if the case had been dismissed, it would have been a loss to what they're trying to do with their strategy. And it would have been a loss to the space because every time these cases get heard in court, it's again, it's it's tough, right, for the people that are involved in Coinbase. But at the same time, every case brings clarity because as US based companies, we have not been given clarity on, on what is not even that there's regulation or no regulation. There's just not a level of clarity uh, that often allows you to operate in a way that you can be confident that there's a long-term sustainability to what you're building and that you're you're doing things the right way. And I think everybody wants to do things the right way. I mean, on the technology side, on the on the product side, but also on the legal side. And so when Coinbase goes, you know, Coinbase goes to court, the SEC is is forced to write down things. And then you know, uh, we've engaged with with a law firm called Fenwick West. They're fantastic. They right away send that text over to us, and they're like. Hey, this is how our understanding has evolved of the the right way to do things in the U.S. And so, we'll talk more in this conversation, and and you'll see U.S. based companies like us often um, having to be very specific about the formulas that we use. But that's not bad, actually. That's good. Like when it's clear what we have to do to bring this technology to people, then we can operate as businesses and knowing like knowing that there's like a long term sustainability on it. So, um, you know clicky headlines aside like that's a great headline the reality of it is that coinbase is is fighting the good fight because it's bringing in clarity like it's forcing the sec to sit down and say this is good this is bad which they don't want to do and that helps us and our law firm and it helps everybody in the space say okay this is how you have to do things this is how you can do things so it's it's big and uh man they're, they're amazing for uh for being so dedicated not just to their own cost but to the to the cost of everybody that that's trying to bring this technology yeah that's a really great insight and i i do think that that is ultimately the takeaway of a lot of people which is highly appreciative towards coinbase for fighting this on the behalf of many people like in the end lots of people want the clarity but it's it's hard for lots of people to coordinate to fight the fight and they seem to be in a very well a very good position to put themselves forward and do that for people on behalf of the industry and i think they're kind of gaining the benefits for for, for doing that as well um very interesting perspective to be able to hear from uh, the kind of chiru labs perspective as well there uh, to get that extra insight let's get into the second headline for today then we're going to get into the azuki news we had manchi big brother a prominent trader, collector, online entrepreneur creating a new coin. And I'm going to share it on the screen for people watching in. Read it out for the people listening in. We have Boba Opa, minimum, one sold pre-sale. This was shared 19 hours ago. And this, I believe, is the contract address, which now has, let me just refresh... 38 and almost 39 million dollars worth of solana it seems like a bunch of other tokens have been sent in here as well there's another two million dollars so yeah I, I, 40 million dollars or so sent into the matchy pre-sale first question to my co-host degenerates is did you did you participate uh second question when is this pre-sale stuff gonna end like is it is it just going to keep going? My quick take on this, I'll share it before we, we go to you guys. On the show yesterday with Thread Guy, which I host in, in the kind of evening of every day, he was asking like, when's it going to end? And my thought was like, it was only going to end 
when someone more important or more influential than the previous person refuses to do it because at the moment you have someone launching a pre-sale and you think, oh, maybe it's going to go and then it fails. But if someone bigger comes across and wants to offer, then everyone's like, oh, well, maybe it's going to work this time because this person has more influence. So it can only ever stop if the person who's more influential says, no, I'm not going to do it. But I don't even know how you get bigger than Matchy in this space. Like what does Gordon Gonner have to drop one? Like who, who would it, how would it even be bigger? A few questions rolling around in my head there. Legendary, let's go to you first. Um, yes, I aped. I mean, I think you probably could tell that I did that. I did ape into that, into a base pre-sale and obviously into the well pre-sale, which side note that surprisingly, I almost didn't see it on the timeline at all, despite the yeah, fact that they collected quiet. Yeah, despite the fact that they collected more than 40 mil in one hour, and it's basically the biggest like public sale or public sale raffle stat that we've ever seen, bigger than Memeland and, and Pixelmon and all the others. Yeah, I just um, did that the show as well so that that was surprising to see nobody talk about that but of course i aped in um when will this end i don't know if i like this theory of when someone bigger says i'm not <laughs> gonna do that i don't know if this is a showstopper so even so even when say, things go terribly wrong like with my you know with the sloth based meme coin with slurf which <laughs> i obviously also aped into and being a sloth myself and um, even when things went terribly wrong we found that hilarious enough to pump it to 600 mil ftv um, so a uh, market cap. So I don't know what it takes for the meme coin season to end. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. It's clearly not clear at the moment. Like, what would it take to end? That was just one of the theories I had. Dem, would love to throw to you first. Then we'll come to Sammy. Like, what are your thoughts? What do you think of my theory? There is, if if it keeps, if someone more influential keeps coming, then people will keep lining up. Is there any merit to that? How are you thinking about it? I mean, there was just, um, you know, Spencer from Spencer Ventures was in another show and he said, if you think about it, like what Machi did by burning all that money on on Blur was like, I think like 4 million or 5 million tra trading, you know, in crazy ways on Blur. That was to really like kind of solidify himself in the space, like to buy that influence. And then, and then you know, now he, now he does this. And so I, I think that just shows like how tuned in Spencer is, to like the attention economy. Uh, if you guys can have him on the show, super, super smart guy. I think I think your take's great because it's fresh and it's original. And I think it, there's a theory behind it. Like when you're inside of a trend, it's very hard for me to see like, oh, this trend's going to go away. Like when you're in it, you're like, this is going to be here forever. It's so much fun. Something dumb happens. So we create a token about it. It goes up. It goes down. Everybody gets out. So it's hard to say like how that ends. I, I think I think that you have a chance to be right because you're taking sort of like a different stand on it. But I'm kind of more with legendary like. It's just so much, it's just, there's just so much room for ridiculousness and fun <laughs> and like enjoyment and, and that rush of it go, of number going up. I think it's hard to, you know, put, you know, close the lid on the Pandora and box. I think the toothpaste is out of the, of, of the, of the roll. And this, this is just with us. Anytime anything happens, that's funny. It's, it's a coin. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I, one of the really interesting points you made there, which I definitely believe to be true, and I think you can actually extend that thinking, want to ask Sammy about this, is the idea that, okay, all of Matchy's activity, all of that burning the money on Blur, all of that stuff, it ends up being an investment into his influence, into his notoriety, into how much people know him in future so that he can launch this coin and do what he just did. And I actually think for a long time, what I noticed in the NFT market as we progressed through 2021, but this still persists, is that, yeah, fine, you can buy an NFT because you like the NFT, but there's no better way of gaining attention than stating on Twitter that you've bought an NFT. Um, I still think to date from 2024, the, the tweet that got the most engagement for me on the timeline is when I wrote like a short post on why I bought a squiggle. I had like probably the craziest engagement on any post that I've done all the time. And it's purely me expressing myself financially, saying that I'm joining this club, buying this asset, and people love it. <laughs> people absolutely love it. If you are displaying your wealth and joining the same club that they're in. And I, so I definitely agree that there's something to do there with like the, your expenditure, being public about it. And then you being able to capitalize in some other way down the line, uh, potentially. Sammy, would love to hear your thoughts on that kind of thinking. And is Machi doing running that type of thinking as well? 
Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple of points. I think the, uh, I mean, the NFT thing, obviously putting that as a PFP or, or using that as like an access to a community, I get that. I think sole meme coins or meme coins generally are essentially a more fungible version of that, but you just don't rock it as a PFP. So I think it is tokenized culture or tokenized community to an extent. If you look at Dark Farms with Bone, like a lot of his initial pre-sale buyers were his community that did very well out of it. Similar with Slurf, it was just like they were buying into the sloth uh, this this meme um, and obviously there was stuff that went wrong but I think like matchy is similar the only issue I have is like you have capped versus uncapped pre-sales sure. matchies is uncapped so it's just it just keeps going so like at, at some point who is going to be who's going to be buying it on secondary whereas I think like the the well three pre-sale it's already four four point six or probably even five times oversubscribed for the public sale at the moment um, but you know that only a certain amount of people are going to get in. People are going to feel FOMO on secondary. So there's going to be some sort of secondary market. I'm just skeptical. I do think that it'll probably, the matchy thing will probably do well. I haven't put money into it. Starting to mid curve it a little bit. And maybe I should just backtrack and actually chuck some soul in. But um, yeah, it's, it becomes, it does become that thing where it's like, who has the most influence? Is that distribution enough to get that into, into the market? Um, I think there is a lot of circulating capital going around the market at the moment. I think about like back in 2021, 2022, you had a lot of value extraction. So yes. like the, the other side mint, a lot of money got taken out of the market. So that liquidity is no longer there to then buy those NFTs and things. But at the moment you have that circulating capital, people are willing to deploy that into the market. So actually yes. I think that the music will stop when that capital depletes. I just don't think okay. we're there yet. And I think that the wider macro look, you've got that, sort of trend going up bitcoin's hitting new all-time highs we've got like the idea that we're not quite in the euphoria of the people market so people are willing to chuck their money into things more freely because they think that there's going to be a higher price that they'll they'll get out at so i think we're kind of in that stage of the market so i think there's a number of variables there that essentially are driving this pre-sale i think it's going to keep going until we kind of hit that realization that that's changed yeah, it's a really good take. One of the things, like the Thread Guy show that I do at the end of the day, each day is kind of a different show to this one where we like we'll listen to hands more, we'll like get more people's opinions and kind of get kind of gauge their sentiment on the market. And my main conclusion that yesterday after speaking to everyone is just like, you guys are crazy. Like you guys are wild. And I completely agree with what you're saying. Like there's so much willingness right now to keep sending. Like people will not not send it. <laughs> Like every single person on stage bar one and including myself, cause I'd been in shows all day. I, I hadn't sent it and I still haven't actually. Um, and one other person hadn't sent it. Every other person you spoke had sent. So it's like, as you say, the willingness to deploy right now is so high and yeah, that's going to have to decline if this trend is going to, uh, stabilize or stop in any way. Um, but look, we've got, just over 10 minutes left. Let's get you up to speed with the Web3 Roundup to get you up to with everything else that's happened in the space. And then we want to hit the main headline of the day. We want to get into the Azuki news. Um, so as always, going to share the screen. This news, this roundup is coming from the snapshot, which is pinned up top. If you find it brings you some value today, please do give it a like. So number one, more alpha. I think I'm pretty sure we shared on the show before. Stablecoin protocol Athena announces airdrop six weeks after going live. Um, this is the a uh, stable coin, which is not really a stable coin. It's kind of like a yield program wrapped in a stable coin. You get like 30% APY gone backed by really big people, Kobe, Ansem, Arthur Hayes, uh, going straight to governance already. Uh, that is pretty cool. Number two, ZTX announces SPF is available as a playable character in the ZTX beta. Good friend of the show, Karma, shared this and it just made me chuckle. There's a little photo of the playable SPF. And if you watch the video, he's actually twerking only 69 editions available. Uh, recommend checking that out. Uh, next, Plots Finance announces airdrop for multiple L NFT holders. Always good that NFT holders getting rewarded uh, from these more financial uh, protocols. Next, Packmoon partners with District One, where you can join Packmoon Space with a thousand pack. I think Packmoon's been doing pretty well recently. Um, getting into some more news: 4.5 trillion dollar asset manager Fidelity files for a spot ETH ETF with staking included. Uh, so more people joining that bandwagon. Next, Infinity Gods announces long-term partnership with Animation Studio, Lemon Sky Studios. That's pretty cool. And finally, as Legendary mentioned, Well raises $44 million in the first hour 
of its pre-sale. I don't know what number that's got to now. Uh, I just did it before the show. Um, interesting stuff there. Legendary, that is the Web3 Roundup. That is everything else. Uh, do you want to kick off or set up the conversation we're going to have on uh, the Azuki news and then throw it to Dem? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Um, just just for context, 51 mil is the number 14,000 some hundred ETH where well is up to by now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty outrageous. So absolutely outrageous but let's let's dive into let's dive into the main headline i mean you you said a couple of things um maybe if we go through the announcement on yes. the um anime coin page or on the azuki page um the main takeaway for me is that we are also like talking about azuki now on an ecosystem level we are talking about anime coin as well as anime chain um and the thinking if we digest the thread a bit i wasn't going to keep it short because i really want to hear from them on that is that anime is not longer a niche subculture. It is growing very fast. Actually, I pointed out in one of our shows, it's growing faster than gaming, projected to reach um, 60 bill market volume or market size by 2030. Um, and by that, also time for anime to create an ecosystem that leverages the IP, that builds infrastructure for anime to live on chain globally. And all of that will be built in collaboration with Arbitrum and the first and premier launch partner of anime chain and anime coin, hence also being Azuki. Yep, very awesome summary there, Legendary. That's super helpful. Let's throw it to Dem right away. Dem, how are you feeling about this announcement? Uh, what are your thoughts on bringing this to market? Absolutely, guys. Well, thanks for having me to talk about this. Um, I'll be speaking today in my role as a contributor to anime coin. Um, the Animal Coin account that you see there is owned by the Weep3 Foundation, separate entity from Chiru Labs. And I think um, what I'm excited about, you know, as, as a contributor uh, to Anime Coin is to finally uh, see the realization of a vision that Azuki had almost two years ago, right around this time, which is to bring anime culture on chain in a way that both web3 participants that had been part of azuki for a long time and collected the nfts but also all the people that are excited about anime but not necessarily able to interact because of the web3 ux right now we're bringing both of those groups together um in a meaningful platform and and through an, through an ip that they love so i think it's it, this is a combination of like the artistry and the creativity of the Azuki IP and, and, and you know the characters, the world building, all of those things that that have driven uh, our collections for a long time, with a very strong technological backing from Arbitrum, which is going to, in my opinion, allow us to create uh, an ecosystem where a normie, a person that doesn't operate in crypto, uh, because of the like almost zero fees and high speed. Um, that, that is afforded by, by the technology that Arbitrum has been building on, can buy in-game items, can uh, watch content, can buy merch with a credit card or, or similarly, not, not, not really knowing that they're doing crypto transactions, but also a place where everybody that's part of the Azuki community um, and, and that is part of the Web3 ecosystem can also go and, and, and stay within uh, a crypto ecosystem, a Web3 driven ecosystem. And that that's just like, it's just so long in, in the works for us. But at the same time, it, it feels so natural to, uh, at least to me, it feels so natural that this is the next step to to take the, the Azuki IP further, but also to just show everybody else, like everybody else in the space, what, what technology can do when tied to like really great IP and really great art. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. I, you kind of alluded to a couple of reasons for the coin in your in your answer. But just to make it clear for people, I think maybe I'm going to ask kind of a follow up there. I think a lot of people have struggled to find either utility or meaning in launching a coin because ultimately it's very, very difficult to create money. Like many governments around the world still struggle <laughs> with maintaining a value in a coin. Like it's not a straightforward job to build this economy. So I guess you, you mentioned some of the aspects already, 
but what would be your vision for anime coin like what's what's the point of it when it's going to be this focal point of anime culture what's the point of anime coin i mean i i'm personally excited about anime chain um the ecosystem and the 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 possibilities that that can create in the in the longer term um so so there's there's definitely like a big element of what the world will be um in terms of anime consumption consumption like the way that that's going up the way that that's being culturally relevant but also just in terms of like in the future more people will want to interact with digital goods rather than physical goods right that there's a whole trend space but i think i think there's like uh, i guess a, a much shorter term um, part of this that is exciting to me, which is you can sometimes like when you're dealing with technology, you can sometimes just be like, oh, we're going to build this infrastructure that is just so technologically sound. But what's the use case? And I think the importance of Azuki being the premier NFT collaborator in this joint effort is that there is a use case like there is an IP already that is on chain. There's an anime IP that we're that, that you know, and now I'm speaking, I guess, as a Chiru Labs employee. Sure. Azuki is coming out with a short form anime anthology with major, major anime names tied to it, like Koro Taniguchi, Kino Ishimura, and we're coming up with more and more episodes. So when when anime chain is live and when anime chain is functioning, it's not just going to be a piece of infrastructure that sits there. It's also going to have an IP, a community, uh, a, a set of content games and products already being produced and so you know it's not just infrastructure there's there's also a front end um that's coming up with it very interesting i've got one uh follow-up question again and then i know legendary's got one as well i've got this take here from seesaw who i believe is a spirit dow member he kind of speaks a little bit at the beginning about like maybe some of the financial aspect but i don't want to dive into that here my main question was the second paragraph where he wrote that the, the movie is actually much bigger than just Azuki and my bags, which I guess is what you're alluding to. They're launching an L3 on Arbitrum. They wouldn't do that if anime was just a token for holders. And it kind of speaks to the vision. Love to hear your perspective on this. They're building a decentralized anime production and multimedia platform, one that will disrupt a massive industry with one of the fastest growing media types in the world. Once proven, they will attract not just Web3 anime brands, but many traditional studios as well. You say you want to kind of bring this anime culture to the forefront that must en encompass like going out there and attracting other people to you right because it, you, maybe you won't just be doing your own ip there'll be other people potentially as well are you able to speak a little bit to that vision is that fair is it not fair what are your thoughts there absolutely yeah i mean uh, as a cheer labs employee i'll refer back to like sagabon's interview at the start of the week where he talked about anime 2.0 which is not just a different way to consume anime that's more uh, involved in to the storytelling, but it's also a different way to produce it. And I think that Chiu Labs is already doing this. I mean, I think that already we are being able to attach creatives to the, like the name of creatives to the Azuki IP, like on our short form anime, that is already creating some buzz in the in industry. Like I'm sure some people have been like, oh, Goro Taniguchi worked on One Piece Red, he worked on Code Geass. What is he doing now? He's working with Azuki. What is Azuki? Because like people in the anime industry, they don't know about NFTs, mm. but now they know that he's engaged in a project and he's going to do three episodes of an anthology. That is already like progress towards this vision of people in the anime industry. And I think I think with any creative industry, um, you could say like, oh, first you got to get to the fans. The fans follow the creatives, like the fans follow the, the, the names, right? So mm. the more we're able to like, speed run our reputation within the anime industry by working on short form content that big creative names can sign on to the more credibility we win in the space when we go into longer form uh content but i think it's also just like there's an opportunity here for this to really take off if um somebody like goro taniguchi is now saying to to the rest of the anime industry like yo i sign up to do this azuki thing and like not only do i just get paid like there's upside for me in this ecosystem like if there's an ecosystem in which the creators can have upside then they're no longer like just getting paid per episode or getting paid per like hour of work they can also get paid uh you know they can also get like a, a part of the success of the ecosystem and and that will really turn this from like a more conceptual thing to, to a more successful thing and that's i think that's important because like if you were telling me about anime chain without azuki attached to it i would be like that's great infrastructure like what the who the with what kind of traditional studio is going to go on that 
platform and that and that Web three chain. Like studios don't are not looking at, at Web three platforms and chains, but you lo- you know there's a there's a chain that launches and it already has like a flagship IP on it. Mm-hmm. Then you have a way to attract uh, more studios and more traditional IPs to it as well. Got it. I like that thinking, and especially. I'm in complete agreement in the idea that like creators will follow other creators and you've definitely nailed some huge, huge names in that arena. So I think that that has a great chance of playing out legendary. I know I'm conscious of time. We're kind of at time for the show, but we definitely want to hear legendary's thought. And then we'll kind of close out uh, shortly after legendary. What did you have to ask? Yeah, I do have a follow-up question. That's maybe more from the perspective of anime chain rather than Azuki. If you if you look at the growth strategy of anime chain, obviously you mentioned Azuki being the premier partner, kind of as an enabler for other more like traditional um, web to anime studios to see it as a potential play for them to join and onboard. But also like the whole anime culture is growing in so many different verticals, where that's the gaming side of things, where that's the traditional um, animes with both like upcoming studios as well as very established ones. Where do you want to position anime chain? Is it as something where you just want to onboard the top tier names or the top tier brands or is it that you want to onboard way broader and also like upcoming projects or names or creatives if you if they have a certain threshold of quality because you also had mentioned that basically if people interact with anime chain in an ideal world in the future they don't even realize that they're interacting with crypto in the background so what's kind of the, the strategic growth vision for um, anime chain i think i think the goal number one is to make Azuki, the anime empire that we've always believed it to be. I, I think that would be the biggest proof point for anime chain, honestly, as well, um, because we're not trying to change one or two things uh, that the industry does. We're trying to show, like, uh, as Azuki, we're trying to show a completely different and better way to create an anime empire from the gaming perspective, from the content perspective, the type of content that's built and also from like the digital collectible side and how you can interact deeper with a franchise beyond just watching the episode and then that's it, the episode's over. So because we have to show a completely new, different way of developing an IP, um, I think the, 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 and now this is, you know, my opinion as a contributor to an anime chain, and, and this is what I believe to be the right strategy. I think the single point of focus of, of anime chain from the very, very start and from anime coin from the very, very start is to make the Azuki IP successful. Cause that will be the, the, the flag planted on the ground to everybody in the industry that like, this is a completely different way to build it, but it's a much smarter way to build it. It's better for the creators. It's better for the people that are working on it. It's better for the consumers. It creates a whole new category and way of doing it. So, you know, I know I know it's also just very exciting to like look at anime chain as, as a wider, more open ecosystem and all the other things that could be built on top of it. Um, but I think it's just very important at this stage that that everybody understands that it is the single focus of this joint collaboration to make the Azuki IP supercharged, like move as fast as possible. And that will benefit anime coin, that will benefit everybody in the Azuki community and in, in very specific ways. And you know. There's, a, there's more options. This is bigger than it. But if, if we are focused on that first item, um, we, we stand a bigger chance to win. Love it, man. Uh, that's super, super interesting. Really, really grateful to have you with us, Dem, to kind of hear about that vision. Definitely learn some new things about the vision. We hope that that was an interesting uh, insight for all of you listening in. We have unfortunately come to the close of today's show run a little bit over but i think it was a good show to do that then just a quick one before we close out where's the best way or how can people keep best on top of uh, what's going on with anime coin anime chain and azuki moving forward and yourself well you know i'm uh dem azuki so you'll just see the eyebrows and you know you're there um i really encourage everyone to follow the anime coin account um and you'll see there that there's a anime.xyz uh, you'll see there's a part of that site that's called points points.anime.xyz so you know i emoji i guess um <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the best way to keep track of uh, what's going to be going down but obviously follow azuki as well uh you know the premier launch partner for for anime coin follow follow both of those and, and you'll be good you gotta you gotta listen to the whole whole show to get the comments which bring out the i emojis um <laughs> very very grateful for that dem thank you so much for joining us really appreciate you 
Uh, guys, hope you enjoyed the show. We're actually not going to be around tomorrow. It is Good Friday. We're also not going to be around on Monday for Easter Monday. We'll be back with you on Tuesday next week, 7 a.m. Eastern time. As always, we hope you have a wonderful Easter. Have a great extended break. We will see you on the other side. I'm your host, Bicek. Thank you to my co-hosts, uh, Legendary and Sammy. Thank you again to our special guest, Dem. And thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you uh, on the other side. Take care. Bye-bye.